Okay, Atelia, you got this. It's just a book review. Okay, I know you finished this book just a minute ago, but you can do this. It's not a big deal, right? Okay. No, I'm having doubts. No, this is okay. Just look at them in the eye. You can do this. You can do this. <sighs> okay. Less than one minute ago, I finished reading Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. Just wanted to say really quickly before I get into this, I'm really sorry about this tie-dye sweater thing. It's not really working very well, but this is my pajama shirt and it's cold. And this was the first thing I found. Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins is romantic and heartwarming and cute and lovely and feel good. I'm hearts, almost. I just finished it, so maybe my thoughts are just still rumbling and all are uh, just t t tumbling all over each other in my brain, so I can't even talk. It's about a girl named Anna Oliphant. She has a nickname called Banana Elephant. I think that's really cute. parents sent her away to a boarding school in France, and she's originally from Atlanta, Georgia. She reluctantly goes. She leaves behind her job with the cute boy at the movie theater and her best friend Bridget. She meets new people. She develops a love for the city of Paris. I know that that's not really a word that you would use to describe books because like pretty is what you would use for sight and everything and you read this but it's pretty my last video in which i was talking about the statistical probability of love at first sight by jennifer e smith you what it was about and after i made the video i was thinking to myself what if i was totally wrong these books are different they're different books but they're so similar. The themes are similar. The emotions you feel while reading it are similar. This one I would describe as lovely as I did, and this I would describe as pretty. And lovely. They're both, both lovely and both pretty. Stop! If you like the sort of romantic books and stuff, I know the title is unfortunate. I've been thinking that the entire time I've been I was reading it. It sounds really stupid. I'm sorry. Why are you complaining? You have nothing to complain about, or you're stupid. What are you doing? But I have those thoughts for every main character. But I feel like I read this book today. Like I used I I read it today. I woke up at four in the morning. Okay. I didn't wake up at four, in the norming, at 4 in the morning for like just random reason. I had a flight to go to San Francisco. This morning, my grandma, who I was going to go there with, my sister and my grandma, um, she called us and she said that our flight was canceled because of weather conditions. Stupid New York! So I didn't go to San Francisco. At 4 in the morning, the call woke me up, so I woke up and, you know, I started getting ready. But then my mom told me that the flight was canceled. So then I read for like, what time is it? 14 hours straight I read. I feel like my emotions towards this book, because this book has been my life for today. I didn't have any human interaction. I didn't do anything but read. I feel like my brain is a bit messed up right now and just in this book. So I'm not thinking clearly. If you read The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight and you like romantic books like that, then I really recommend this book. There, you know, there were some parts towards the middle end-ish. It kind of got a little bit annoying, I guess. Like, there were some parts that just were annoying, but I feel like that's just because it was, like, the climax or whatever, and that was the falling action, or just, like, I don't know, more rising action, maybe? I don't know. I don't know the story arc of the book. But I feel like maybe that's just because that was the bad part of the book. It has to go down to go back up. Books. Am I right? All right, so this is the spoilery section of my video. If you have not read this book yet and you want to continue watching this video, then I suggest you read this book. It's a really great book. Dan on the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. If you've been following me with my other book reviews and you like my taste in books, then this is my taste in books. If you have not read this book yet, then go read it and then come back and watch this video. But even if you have not read this book and you're going to stop watching this now to go read this book to come back later, you can still comment, subscribe. What did I do last time? I did something cool last time. It was, um, you can still comment on my videos, 
subscribe to my channel if you like me. Alright, so this is the spoilery section. What did you guys think of Anna and the French Kiss? I want to know. So tell me in the comments because I like reading other people's opinions of things. So when they became best friends, Thanksgiving, when he slept with her, but not slept with her for three nights in a row. <laughs> I love them as friends. Really, really loved them as best friends. And when things got awkward after Thanksgiving, my heart broke a little bit. During um, Christmas break, during those two weeks, they called each other every day. So their relationship was like building and they were bonding with each other. And it was really cute. And they became best friends. And I loved that because they tease each other. They make fun of each other. They do what best friends do. And there's still some tension there, which is really good. I read in Sharks and Boys by Kristen Tracy, which is an okay book. One of her characters mentioned that she wrote, relationships are like, ooh, drop the relationship. Relationships are like rubber bands. A little bit of tension is good. It keeps it there. Once someone goes too close, it falls and it breaks. But if you stretch it too far, the band will snap and then it'll be... Too bad. So like, tension is good. A little bit of tension is good is basically what I'm saying. But it can be like on all different levels. Really clingy boyfriend and girlfriend, like that's their tension of being very clingy. But if you get more clingy than you already are, then, you know, space is good. There's definitely tension between Anna and Entienne, Entienne St. Clair. I probably just butchered that name. I'm sorry, world. There's a lot of tension there. But then, so, after winter break, when there was a lot of that tension, when she saw him and she decided to change in her mind from calling him St. Clair to Etienne, I, oh, and she hugged him, and, mm, but then the kiss, that kiss, what is wrong with you guys? The thing is that if, just, oh, the timing was wrong. So many things about this book, the timing was wrong, like, because he's so frustrated, but that makes it a good book. So I can't really criticize the book for that. I can only criticize the ink on the paper. We get excited about ink on paper. Someone typed this and it printed it out, chose a pretty cover, wrote the title and their name. It's not weird to think about. So anyway, so when she decided to change, that was so intimate, but then she also said like she loves him. And I felt like that was sudden. There was a few things that were sudden. There was that, and then also the fact that like later when Amanda insulted Meredith and Anna defend, Anna, 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 my mind is still with Frozen. When she defended her, like that was great. The whole school hates her? Why? Why does the whole school hate her? Does the whole school love Amanda is the whole school shallow. I was confused about that. And then in the end, I feel like things are patched up way too easily. Bridget and Anna, Anna just had to send her a long letter. Like if I were Bridget, I'd be mad. Maybe that's just who I am. Everything just turned out to be okay, which is good, you know, good endings. The happy endings are good. But it just seemed too abrupt. I had like 20 pages between the part where um, St. Clair confessed his love to her and all that on the top, looking over Paris, all that, and you know that whole thing, loving each other. And that was great, I loved that, but I would like 20 pages or something of transition of her and the other people. Not like her and St. Clair and how everybody's like um, seeing them, you know, but I'd like it, her making up with Meredith, a little bit more, their relationship, Rashmi, Josh, Bridget. I, I'd like her to punch Toph in the face and virtually through email. I would have liked that. But everything just kind of ended. It's on a happy note, on a hopeful note, like looking forward to the future what will happen, but come on guys. But overall, I enjoyed this book. There were flaws, there were flaws. There's flaws with everything. And I got annoyed at parts, you know? And there were so many good moments. <sighs> book smells so good. I like, Stephanie Perkins' writing style. I like how it's really in her mind and she, y you know what I'm saying? So, hi guys. I'm Until Get Tomorrow and this was a book review on Anna and a French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. If you liked it, then give me a thumbs up on this and comment what you think of this video, me and this book. Uh, just comment on anything you want to. I love reading your comments. If you like me, then subscribe to my channel. I make book reviews, other videos, um, pretty much whatever I want because I can and whenever I want. So, bye guys. I don't know if that's actually going to become a thing 
I mean, it's cute and funny, but I don't know. Okay, goodbye.